I have behind me on my desk one of the most controversial religious texts of all time. This is the Holy Quran, the central text of Islam and what Muslims believe to be the literal word of God. And as you might expect, there are some strong opinions about this book. I'm 100% confident that Islam is false, that it was Muhammad's invention, a mix of paganism, Judaism, and Christianity. What made me assured that Islam is true, basically. So I started an in-depth study of the Quran on my own self as a teenager because I wanted to see certain things. If you find me one actual inconsistency like this, right? I'll leave Islam. Okay, in front of you. S send me your, send me your email. Okay. So, why is this book so controversial? Well, unlike many other books, this book makes one singular, massive claim. That it is the direct, unchanged word of God, revealed verbatim to the Prophet Muhammad. Basically, if this book is true, it means that 1.8 billion people are following the actual words of God, and that all these teachings are absolute truth. But if this book isn't true, well, that would mean that a quarter of the world is currently being spiritually catfished, and honestly, both of these possibilities are pretty insane. And so, after seeing so many strong opinions about the Quran, I realized that there's something I could do to add to this conversation. Now, for those of you that don't know, I actually have my master's degree in data science, and something that I learned in this degree is that text can be used as data. And so using something called natural language processing, we can actually add a layer of objectivity to things that are usually more subjective. For example, say we were on Amazon looking at reviews. We can use a natural language processing technique called sentiment analysis to assign an objective score to how positive or negative the words in the review are. And we can objectively tell that once our reviews consistently use more negative negative words, while five-star reviews consistently use more positive ones. And if we can use natural language processing to analyze Amazon reviews, we can use it to analyze any piece of text as well. And so I realized we can take the entire Quran and systematically analyze it from beginning to end. And not only that, we can also take the entire text of the Old Testament, the New Testament, and even the Book of Mormon and see how they compare. So let's go hop into the code and see what we can find. Okay, so we're actually in the code now, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but I'll give you an overview about what we did. So the first thing that we need to do, obviously, is to actually get the data. And so I just googled Quran json and i got this data set right here that has a bunch of translations now before we dig too deep it's helpful to take a bird's eye view of everything and so the first thing that i always like to do is just to get some basic summary statistics i'm going to pull the total words in each book the reading level and some other basic metrics for us to kind of understand the data at large and so i have a script right here that does that along with some other basic visualizations and so let's look at this graph right here we can see that the old testament has the most number of words followed by the book of mormon the new testament and then the quran and now this is interesting if you look at this graph on the bottom right i did a vocabulary richness score. So basically you just take the unique number of words and you divide it by the total number of words. And you can see that the Quran actually has the most rich vocabulary out of all the books, followed closely by the New Testament and then the Book of Mormon and Old Testament. I also analyze the most frequent words used in each of the books. And so in Quran, the most frequent word is Allah, which means God. For the Book of Mormon, the most common word is people. In the Old Testament, it is Lord. And the New Testament is God. And then the last summary statistic that I wanted to get was the reading level. The Quran is the highest and the New Testament is the lowest at a ninth grade reading level. And that pretty much covers all this summary statistics. Now that we have a bird's eye view of these different texts, we can go a little bit more into depth into some real natural language process. And so I found this model called Roberta Base Go Emotions. And so basically what it does is that you're able to input any text. And so I'll just say, for example, I love my mom. And that's actually able to classify the emotions in this sentence. And so you'll see right here that love is the primary emotion that's being displayed. Alternatively, if I say I hate my mom and I click generate, you'll see that anger is the primary emotion. And so we're going to use this model and give a score to each verse in all of the different texts. And then we'll be able to aggregate that data all together and get some insights. And so let's first look at the Quran. So we aggregated all of the verses together and the number one emotion that we got was neutral. And this is just due to a lot of these verses not being as simple as I love or hate my mom. It's a lot of narrative text or thus saith the Lord text. But we can see down here on this graph that there are some outliers that we'll take a look at in a little bit. But after neutral, the next emotions in the Quran are approval, caring, annoyance, and curiosity. You'll see something similar for the Old Testament right here. The New Testament also has similar emotions, but the Book of Mormon actually has different values with sadness, approval, caring, and disappointment being the next ones. Now, how do the emotions compare across all the texts? Well, you can see right here in this heat map that they're actually very similar. The Quran has the most emotional similarity to the entire Bible, but it's also extremely close to the Book of Mormon as it's at 0.9. Then you can see all these other scores, even the New Testament and Book of Mormon, it may seem low at 0.784, but this is still a very high score. And so all of the texts are actually very emotionally similar. And so like I mentioned before, while the majority of the texts 
text is neutral, there are different hot spots for different emotions. For example, the text is really small, but Second John is extremely caring, or Philemon has an extremely high gratitude score. In the Book of Mormon, the Book of Venus has an extremely high sadness score. So that was the first thing that I wanted to do. I just wanted to look at the emotional analysis of these books, and I think it's very interesting that all of these books are extremely similar emotionally. But what do they actually talk about? It's one thing to express an emotion, it's another thing to actually teach something. And so this is the final part of the analysis that we did. And so I'm not going to go into all the details because it's extremely boring, but basically using a process called clustering, the code is actually able to see different groups of themes based on the words used in the sentences. And believe it or not, there's actually quite a bit of overlap in the actual teachings and themes of these books. Now if we look at this graph down here, this shows the most evenly distributed shared topics. So some of the topics that are shared across all the different texts are the message of repent ye and be saved. That's pretty cool. My commandments, so keep my commandments is another shared topic. Topics around tree, fruit, and vineyards. Another one is around angels. Another one about marriage, wife, her husband, and that type of thing. The distinction between light and darkness. And the discussion of Abraham is present in all of the texts. And I think the last thing from this analysis that I want to share is this graph right here. This probably doesn't look like anything to you right now, but let me explain. So on the x-axis right here, we have all the different topics that the code was able to pull out. And then on the y-axis here, we have the different books that we're analyzing. And so if the rectangle is blue, that means that that topic was present in that book. And if the topic is white, that means that the topic was not present in this book. And so you'll see in this graph that there is so much blue here, meaning that for well over two thirds of all the chapters, the Quran, the Book of Mormon, and the Bible, they all share the same themes. And I think that this is so cool. There's a lot of rhetoric on social media about why Christians are right and Muslims are wrong, or reasons that the Quran is better than the Bible, or why the Book of Mormon is different from the Quran or the Bible. But when we look at this graph, we see that there was a lot more similarities than there are differences. And we saw that with the emotions as well, that all these books were extremely similar emotionally as well as thematically. Now, as you can see, there's a ton of other things that I could go through, but I don't want this video to go too long. And so let me know in the comments if you want to see a part two of this or other things that you want me to analyze from these texts. But for right now, I think this gives us a pretty thorough analysis of all these different texts and what's similar about them and what's different. So does this all prove that the Quran is the infallible word of God? Not necessarily. But spending time analyzing and reading this book has given me a deep appreciation for the beauty of this book and also for Islam in general. For example, the Quran teaches, Righteous is he who giveth his wealth for love of God, to kinsfolk, and to orphans, and the needy, and the wayfarer, and to those who ask, and who payeth the poor due. It also teaches, Whosoever saves a life, it will be as if they saved all of humanity. Indeed, God is with those who are of service to others. And so, while I may not be converting to Islam right now, this whole experience did teach me one important thing. We have a lot more in common than we do differences. As I learned in the analysis, so many of the teachings of the Quran are aligned with both the Bible and the Book of Mormon. And so, given that the sacred text teaches humility, service, caring for the poor and needy, these are all things that we need more of in our world. And so, I will gladly do whatever I need to do to ensure that my Islamic brothers and sisters are able to practice their religion wherever they are. Now, if you like this video, you might like my previous video where I analyzed the entire Book of Mormon. Alright, I think that's it. Bye.